Today we're gonna learn how to trim extra hair like this in Photoshop. Guys, it's super super easy. We're gonna use some of the most basic tools like cloning, selections and liquify but in a completely new way. So make sure you don't miss it. Without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and first off, a very big thank you to Troy Davidson for submitting this photo. Finding such photos with such intricate problems is really difficult. So very big thank you to you. Check out more of his work right here. So let's jump straight in. So one of the first things that you might want to do is to make a copy of the background lab. To do that, control or command J. Now we have a copy. Now, since we are going to apply some liquify, some cloning and so that's why we created the copy of the background layer so that everything stays safe. Right? Suppose we make a mistake here or we might want to decrease the opacity. We can always use that. Now, next what you're going to do, zoom in. As simple as that, zoom in. By the way, Troy himself taught me this technique and one of the things he said to me, which I think is very crucial, is this. Listen carefully. You already have the edges. You already have these edges. You don't need to erase them. Right? You already have these details at the edges of the hair. You already have them here. You don't need to remove them. You just have to modify them. How? Here's how. Okay? So make sure you select the lasso tool or any selection tool of your choice and select the junk area. Select the extra hair area. Okay? And select more than you have to. I always stay by this. Select more than you have to. Why? Because you can always mask. So go ahead and select more than you have to. Since it has a gray background, it is much more easier, but it doesn't mean that you cannot do in other backgrounds. It's just the background has to be a little seamless, a little bit blurred out maybe. Okay. So you can do that without blurred out background also. I'll tell you how to. So. Once you have selected this area, all you have to do control or command J. Now it's on its own layer. You can name it if you want, but I'm not going to name it. So decrease the opacity of it. Okay. Decrease the opacity of it and then take it in. Okay. Take it in. How much in? To the point where the extra hair stays in line with the normal hair. So the normal hair line goes like this. Okay. So we have to keep it somewhere around this so that it looks good. Okay. Somewhere around this, this is good. You can also use something like, you can increase the opacity. You can also use something like a difference to figure out where to keep the hair. See, you can see the difference, right? And that's what the blend mode is. It's really good for aligning stuff in Photoshop when you don't want to decrease the opacity and it's good too. Okay. So this is the place where we wanted it to be and change back the blend mode to normal. Now here's the key. The key is create a mask. Okay. Create a mask. Okay. Take the brush. Make sure the foreground color is black. Okay. To toggle between the foreground and the background color, press X. Okay. If your foreground color or background color shows something else, press D to reset the swatch. Okay. Press X. Now make the brush a little bigger. I did some mistake. D and X. Make the brush a little bigger. Make it a little softer, as soft as it can go and start painting at the edges. Now it is smooth. Now I'll show you what magic does it have. Now slowly paint over this edge. Okay. And you might want to decrease the flow to somewhere around 20 so that you have more opportunities to paint again and again and have as soft results as you want and as smooth and natural result as you want. Okay. So just paint over here and look at the magic. See how we are filling up these areas? watch. Just have a look. Okay. We are painting with black right now, which means we are making parts of this layer invisible and just the edges visible. As we said, edges are already there. Don't let go of it. Okay. So before, after so easily, so nicely, we have the original edges. We have the original hair, but we have modified it. Now you might want to repaint it a little extra. So you might, you might want to toggle between foreground and background color, press X and paint the outside area with white. You want, we don't want this right here. Okay. 
Now watch, have a look. Before, after. Isn't this nice? You want to paint a little more darker here. There we go. Before, after. So that's how you do it. Now let's do it for this side. Now since we have ear here, it's going to be a little difficult, but we can try. Let's come back to this layer and select the selection tool, do the same thing. So select this area, always remember this, select more than you have to, why? Because you can always mask that out. Now, another thing that I just forgot to tell you, since we had a gray seamless background, it was very simple to do. If you didn't have a seamless background, you would see certain edges here, okay? So for example, if the background was something like this, I'll show you right here. If the background was this, I'm just painting here for a second to show you what I mean. The background had something like, say, this. If it's not something like this, I'm just faking something up. Now, then if you had to make a copy, for example, like this, and you had to push it in, you would have, you would see some edges. So in that case, when you create a mask, make sure you also paint over here so that to make this smooth. So that's what you do when you don't have a seamless background. Okay, we do have a seamless background. So we will go back to our seamless background. All right. So do the same thing. Come back to this layer one, select any selection tool, the one you want, select the area. Remember, select more than you have to, and then just take it in. Now, control command J to put it on its own layer and take it in. How much in? Change the blend mode to difference to see how much. This much is fine. Now occasionally you might also want to rotate that. So controller command T, move the anchor point right here and you might want to rotate this just a little bit here. Something like that. You might want to do that sometimes. Okay. Now that seems pretty good. Mm, pretty much okay. Hit enter. See how it's joining here? Great. Now create the mask, change the blend mode to normal and take the brush and paint with what? Black. Now, paint like this. Have a look. We have let go of that hair before, after. Now the hair is inside. You can even push it further if you want to like this. Have a look. Right? So come back to the mask. Okay, switch. Don't forget to switch to the mask. Don't paint with black or white on the same layer. Don't paint here with black or white. So you will destroy it. Don't do that. Okay? Don't. Just come back to the mask and then paint with black or white. Okay? So now, let's try. Let's see how it goes. We can pull it even further. We painted a little extra. If we paint a little extra, what we do? We zoom in and then we take the brush, make sure the color is white this time. We paint out the outside hairs. There we go. That's how we do it. With a soft brush, make sure the flow is low. Flow is low. And there we go. These are some things that will clear up soon, before, after, something with white. We'll clear that up, but inside, there we go. All right, now we're gonna take care of the ear. So have a look at the before and after. Before, after, most of it is gone. Now you might wanna paint in black in these areas. We don't want that to be go so dark. Keep check on the before and after again and again, time and again, keep check. Okay, before, after, before, after, really nice and now the ear stuff. So paint with black here, the ear side. Now we will see something like hairs around it. We need to take care of that. We need to learn to take care of that. How? Well, now we have got the ear. We have to carefully zoom in and make sure the brush is white and then carefully, very carefully, just paint over here, very carefully. You can leave a little hair or two there. Before, 
after it's gone. Isn't that nice? Now it's time for us to switch to liquify. So let's create a new layer above all of the layers and let's have a merged layer of all of this done. Okay. So to do that, control, alt, shift and E. If you are using a Mac, it's option, command, shift and E. Before we do anything, I just didn't clear these hairs up, so you do that yourself. Before we do anything, make sure you change this into a smart object so that any changes we make in Liquify, it's totally non-destructive. To do that, there are two ways of doing it. You can right click on it and select convert to smart object or what you can do, you can go to filter, convert for smart filters. Both do the same thing and click OK. Now, once it's converted into smart object, what you'll be able to do, whatever changes you make in Liquify, you can always double click on it and revert back to the original or modify those changes. Now, also to fasten up the process, you can change the bit depth to 16, 8 bits per second from 16 to 8. Okay, do that because what happens is some filters are not applicable on 16 bit per channel images. Okay, so make sure you go to image mode and change it to 8 bit. Then go to filter, liquify. Now, here comes the real magic. Now, in liquify, we'll zoom in and just shape the hair. Don't make it look like a helmet. Troy said to me, don't make it look like a helmet. Just make it natural at the same time, shape it well. So, to shape it well, select the forward warp tool and then make the brush bigger and slowly nudge it in, slowly nudge it in. And now here's another thing, we don't want to affect his face. So keep that in mind. So what you can do to be on the safer side, you can use the freeze mask tool and you can paint over his face so that it doesn't get affected. But I'm not gonna do it, you can do that to be safe. All right, so now, now let's nudge it in simply, slowly nudge it in slowly nudge it in and give it a kind of shape now that's the secret to liquify is that you don't do it all at once just slowly nudge it in okay now this looks good we need to pull this out a little bit to show more of his hair there we go, and pull his head a little inside. The hairline actually. Looks nice. Be minimal with liquefied, don't go overboard. Now, we need to pull this inside just a little bit more. There we go, all right. Have a look at the before and after. So to see the before and after, check this off preview before after. Much better, right? Much better. Now, okay. We might have to bring it a little more outside. And you get the idea. You can take as much time as you want. You can take this, bring this out. You can get this in. And, but be gentle with it, okay? Don't go overboard. Be gentle with it. Right. So let's quickly look at the before and after. I just did two sides. So you take the time to do the other before, after. Now you might want to zoom in and check out the other areas. So for example, this one. Click OK once you're satisfied. Now here's another thing. Since this is a smart object, we have liquify here we can always adjust it suppose you did something extra or you did something wrong you can always double click on the liquify liquify will open again and then you can always reconstruct that using the reconstruct tool and if you paint in here it will come to its original state okay so i didn't want that i'll cancel that now we are pretty much close to the nice hair so we need to fill in some gaps okay so here is a gap we need to fill now, how to fill those gaps? Again, create a new layer, and this has to be a raster image, okay? Also, what you can do, you can create a copy of this area of the hair, but I'm gonna create a new layer with everything merged down. Control, Alt, Shift, E, Command, Option, Shift, E, if you're using a Mac, and then take the clone stamp tool, make sure the flow is low, somewhere around 30, 40, something like that. I'll say 30, 
and then take the sample from this area okay make sure the blend mode is darken and whenever the blend mode is darken if you have to choose between a lighter area and a darker area choose the lighter area this is the trick because you will not accidentally darken too much so we have a choice to fill this area with either with this or this. So first we'll try to fill it with this. So we'll take a sample from this and just fill it here. Now darken is such a blend mode which won't paint in the light pixels, which just won't paint in the light pixels. It only darkens. Now it will only paint if the area is lighter than the sampled area. Make sense? No? Let me show you. So if I take a sample from here and fill it here, it just won't lighten the area. It just won't create extra gaps. It will just darken it. Okay, so let's take a sample from here and fill it here gently. Filled. Let's take a sample from here, fill it here gently. Filled. Let's take a sample from here and fill it here gently. Filled, 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 done. Have a look. Isn't that nice? Before, after we filled that area, we can also fill this area the same way, this area the same way. And now you have a general idea of how to trim hair in Photoshop. So that's how you trim hair in Photoshop. Hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss a thing. I would like to take this moment to thank all of our supporters who are supporting Pixin Perfect to keep it free for everybody forever. If you want to support this channel, check the link in the description below. A very big thank you also to Lizette Cruz for making this show possible. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.